This is a special presentation of AreaCable.com and the Area Guides Network, produced by CraigShip.com, with special guests from around the globe. I'm Peter McDermott, and now on to our feature presentation. Okay, Monica, you're going to be reading some Shakespeare. Take it away. Hello, everyone. We'll be doing the entire Act One of The Tempest. So enjoy. Or endure. <laughs> <laughs> Boat swaying. Here, Master, what cheer? Good. Speak to the manners. Fall to it yearly, or we run ourselves aground. Be stir. Be stir. Hi, my hearts. Cheerly, cheerly, my hearts. Yeah, yeah, take in the topsail. Tend to the master's whistle. Blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. A good boat, boat strain, have care. Where's the master? Play them in. I pray now, keep below. Where is the master, Bosun? Do you not hear him? You mar our labor. Keep your cabins, you do assist the storm. Nay, good. Be patient. When the sea is. Hence, what cares these roarers for the name of king? To cabins, silence, trouble us not. Good. Yet remember whom thou hast ab aboard. None that I love more than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to silence and work the peace of the present, we will not hand a rope more. Use your authority. If you cannot, give thanks you have lived so long. And make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the hour, if it so have. Cheerly, good hearts. Out of our way, I say. I have great comfort from this fellow. Methinks he hath no drowning mark upon him. His complexion is perfect gallows. Stand fast, good fate, to his hanging. Make the rope of his destiny our cable. For our, our own doth little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Down with the top mast. Yeah, lower, lower. Bring her to try with main course. Ah, a plague upon this howling. They're louder than the weather or our office. Yet again, what do you hear? Shall we give o'er and drown? Have you a mind to sink? A pox of your throat, you bawling, blasphemous, and terrible dog. Work you then. Hang, cur, hang, you whore son. Insolent noisemaker, we are less afraid to be drowned than thou art. I'll warrant him for drowning, though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell and as leaky as an unstanched wench. Lay her a hold, a hold. Send her two courses off to sea again. Lay her off. All lost. To prayers, to prayers, all lost. What, must our mouths be cold? The king and prince at prayers, let's assist them, for our case is as theirs. I'm out of patience. We are merely cheated of our lives by drunkards. This whip-changed rascal, would thou mightest lie drowning? The washing of ten tides. He'll be hanged yet, though every drop of water swear against it, and gape at widest to glut him. We split, we split. Mercy on us, farewell. 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 Let's all sink with the king. Yurks. Let's take leave of him. Now I would give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground, long heath, brown furs, anything. The wills above be done. I would fain dry a di die a dry death. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, but that the sea mounting to the welkin's cheek dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perished. Had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth or air. It should the good ship so have swallowed and the frotting souls within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart 
There's no harm done. Oh, woe the day. No harm. I've done nothing but in care of thee. Of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am better than Prospero, master of a full poor self, and thy no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee farther. Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. So, hi there, my art. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have with such provision in mine art, so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition in an air, better to any creature in the vessel which thou hearts cry, which thou sought sink, sit down, for thou must know further. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stop, to let me into a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay, not yet. The hours now come, the very minute bids, be open thine ear, obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto the cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou waste not, out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person? Of anything the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance. Tis far off, and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once attended me? Thou hadst and more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark backward in the abysm of time? If thou remembrance aught there, thou camest here. How thou camest here, thou mayst. But that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since. Thy father was the Duke of Milan, and a prince of power. Sir, are you not my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said, Thou waste my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan. And thou his only heir, and princes, no worse issue. Oh, the heavens, what foul play had we that we came from thence? Or blessed was it we did? Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved hence, but blessedly pulled hither. Oh, my heart bleeds. To think of the teen that I have turned you to, which is from my remembrance, please you farther. My brother and thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee, mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He whom this next I felt, of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state, as that time, through all the signories it was the first, and Prospero, the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity, and for the liberal arts without a parallel, those being all my study. The government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. Being once perfected, how to grant suits, how to deny them, who to advance and who to trash, or overtalking, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or changed them, or else new formed them, having both the key of officer and office, set all hearts of the state. To what tune pleased his ear that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely truck and sucked my vordor out on it? Thou tense not. Oh, well, good sir, I do. I pray thee, mark me. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind, with that which, by being so retired, or prized all popular rate, in my false brother, awaked an evil nature, and my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary, as great as my trust was, which had indeed no limit, a confidence sans bound. He being thus lorded, not only with what revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who, having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory, and to credit his own life, he did believe he was indeed the Duke, 
out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing. Dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness. To have no screen between this part he played, and him he played it for, he needs will be absolute, Milan. Me, poor man, my library was dukedom large enough of temporal royalties. He thinks me now incapable, confederates. So dry he was for sway, with the king of Naples to give him annual tribute, mm. do him homage, subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom yet unbowed, alas, poor Milan, to most ignoble stupid. Oh, the heavens. Mark his condition and the event. Then tell me if this might be a brother. I should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad sons. Now the condition. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer, fair Milan, with all the honors on my brother, whereon a treacherous army levied. One midnight, fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurried thence, me and thy crying self. Alack, for pity, I not remembering how I cried out then, We'll cry it o'er again. It is a hint that rings mine eyes to it. Hear a little further, and then I'll bring thee to the present business, which now is upon us, without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well demanded, wench. My tale provokes that question. Dear, they durst not. So dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colors fair painted their foul ends. In few they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it. There they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh, to the winds whose pity sighing back again, the dust but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, what cherubim? Thou wast, that did preserve me, thou didst smile, infused with a fortitude from heaven. When I have decked the sea with drops full salt, under my birth and groaned, which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue, how came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity, being then appointed master of this design, did give us, with rich garments, linens, stuffs, and necessaries, which then have steaded much, so of his gentleness, knowing I love my books, he furnished me from mine own library with the volumes that I prize above my dukedom. Would I might but ever see that man. Now I arise. Sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow. Here in this island we arrived, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princesses can that have more time, for vainer hours and tutors, not so careful. Heavens, thank you for it, and now I pray you, sir, for still tis beating in my mind, your reason for raising the sea storm? No, thus far forth, by accident most strange, bountiful fortune. Now, my dear lady, half mine enemies brought to the shore, and by my prescience I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence, if now I court not but omit, my fortunes will ever but after droop. Here cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come. I am ready now. 
Approach, my Ariel. Come. All hail, great master. Grave sir, hail, I come. To answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel and all his quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article, I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in the every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places, on the topmast, the yards, and the bowsprit, would I flame distinctly, then meet and join, Jove's lightning, the precursors, of the dreadful thunderclaps more momentary, and sight outrunning were not, the fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune, seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad, and played some tricks of desperation, all but mariners plunged in the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then all of fire with me, the king's son Ferdinand, with hair upstarting, then like reeds not hair, was the first man that leapt, cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. My, that's my spirit. But was not this nice shore? Close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perished, on their sustaining garments not a blemish, but fresher than before, and, as thou bedst me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling in the air with sighs, in an odd angle of the isle, and setting his arms in this sad knot. Of the king's ship the mariners may say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in the harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou calledst me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed Bermuda, there she's hid. The mariners all under hatches stowed, who with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left to sleep, and for the rest of the fleet which I dispersed, they all have met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float bound safely home for Naples, supposing that they saw the king's ship racked, and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How oh, now, Moody? What is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out? No more. I pray thee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made no mistaking, served without or grudge or grumblings. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and think it is too much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast? Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argier. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgets, this damned witch Sycorax, for mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing from Argier. Thou knowest was banished for one thing she did that would not take her life. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant, and for thou was a spirit too delicate to act her early and abhorred commands. Refusing her grand hest, she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers, and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, 
within which space she died and left thee there, where thou didst bend thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, a freckled whelp, hag-born, not honored with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Dull thing, I say so. He, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service, thou best know'st what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts. Of ever angry bears, it was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art, when I arrived and heard thee, that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible, to every eyeball else. Go take this shape, and hither come into it. Go, hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. Miranda. Please awake, Miranda. Shake it off. Come on. <laughs> the strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Okay. Okay, Tis a villain, I'm, sir. Tis a villain, sir. I do not love to look on. But as it is, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serve in offices that profit us. Well, slave, Caliban, thou, earth thou, speak. There's wood enough within. Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, win. Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel, hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth. As wicked do as ever my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fen, drop on you both, a southwest blow on ye, and blister you all over. For this be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramped side stitches that shall pin thy breath up. Urchins shall for that vast of night they, that they may work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. This island's mine by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and made, madest much of me, wouldst give me water with berries in it and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less, that burn by day and by night. And then I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities o' the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, and fertile. Cursed be that I did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you sty me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep from me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh ho, oh ho, what would it have been done? Thou didst prevent me. I had peopled else the isle with Caliban's. The bored slave, which any print of goodness will not take, being capable of all ill, I pitied thee, 
took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not savage know thine own meaning, but wouldst gabble like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known, but thy vile race, though thou hadst, thou didst learn, had that end which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hadst deserved more than a prison. You taught me language, and my profit on it is, I know how to curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. Hagseed hence, fetch us in fuel, and be quick, thou best, to answer other business. Shrooks thou malice, if thou neglects or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee, I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my dam's god, Setebos, and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Ah, Ariel's song, come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands, curtsied when you have and kissed, the wild waves whist, put it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burthen bear. Hark, hark, the watchdogs bark. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting's chanticleer cry cock a doodle -dow. Where should this music be? The air or the earth? It sounds no more, and sure it waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's wreck, this music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me rather, but tis gone. No, it begins again. Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing to him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange, sea nymphs hourly ring his kneel. Hark, now I hear them, ding dong bell. The ditty does remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. The fringe curtains of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest, young. What is it, a spirit? Lord, how it looks about. Believe me, sir, it carries a brave horn, but tis a spirit. No, Inch. It eats and sleeps, and hath such senses as we have, such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and but he something stained with grief that's beauty's canker. Thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine for nothing natural I ever saw known so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess on whom these heirs attend. Vouchsafe my prayer may know if you remain upon this island and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, oh, you wonder if you be made or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens, I am the best of them that speak this speech, were I but where it is spoken. How oh, the best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine eyes, never since at ebb, beheld the king my father wrecked. Alack for mercy. Yes, faith, and all his lords. The Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee, if now twere fit to do it. At the first sight they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some, wor some wrong. A word. 
Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that ever I saw, the first that, that ever I sighed for. Pity moved my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, one word more. They are both in either's powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. One word more, I charge thee, that thou attend me, that dost here usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy, to win it from me the Lord on. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Follow me. Speak not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt now drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow. No. I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What, I say, my foot, my tutor? Put thy sword up, traitor? Who make us a show but darest not strike thy conscience? Is so possessed with guilt? Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick, and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father. Hence. Hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity, I'll be a surety. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an impostor. Hush! Thou thinks there is no more such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish wench. To the most of this men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats, to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. But, uh, but through my prison once a day behold this maid. All corners else of the earth let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. It works. Come on, thou hast done well, fine Ariel. Follow me. Hark what thou else shalt do me. Be of comfort, my father's of a better nature, sir. Then he appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Thou shalt be free, as mountain winds. But then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Speak not for him. <laughs> the end of Act One. Cool. Good job. Good job, yeah. Lynn. Good. 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 Well done, everybody. Yeah, sorry about that one part. I had muted my mic and then I was talking with <laughs> That's why you had to jump in there, Monica. Good. Oh, no problem. <laughs> it's a good thing my mic was muted because I like said shit under my breath. <laughs> they, they call that a technical yeah. malfunction? Yeah. <laughs> I know, but so it wasn't that I forgot to speak and just forgot I muted my mic. Yeah. Oh, no problem. It happens. So, so before we stop the recording, um, we'll start all all the way over on the left uh, on my screen, uh, Glenn, if you have a website that you'd like to mention, and then we'll just go right right down the line. Okay. Uh, yeah, a couple of websites. I've got uh, GameView, Fake Gaming News, Printafit.blogspot.com, and I've also got the newsosphere.wordpress.com, and I'm on Facebook and Twitter and obviously Google+. Plus. <laughs> Next. Jara, do, do you have anything to say? That's Jara. I, I guess not. Uh, John? Um, okay. John? Uh, hold on, hold on. He's a little. <laughs> did you, did you have any website or anything you'd like to mention? Okay, you're muted, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's muted. Yep. You'll need a to website. I would like to mention. Yeah. Anything you'd like to mention? 
I enjoyed the Shakespeare. This is the first time I've heard Shakespeare recited since I was doing it. And it was we had to do ours in a southern drawl. It was sort of a thing, so it killed it. So you're going to read a part next week, eh? Oh, I would. Oh, you want oh, me to I would love. I would love to come and do that myself. Okay, Monica. Monica will get you added to the list. Um, it, yeah. I've, I've never done Shakespeare. I would hate to slaughter the language. I would hate to slaughter him slaughtering the language. Oh, well, we slaughter him all the time without. <laughs> I know. But the funny thing is, they all said he was slaughtering the language at the time, which is we look back on it, it's like it's so beautiful, and we're like, don't slaughter. Don't slaughter Shakespeare. I mean, the critics of his time. Yeah. But um, I would love to read a bit. Okay. Okay. Did you, well, I'll add you to the Did list. you have any website that you'd like to mention? No. Okay. We'll go on to Google John. Plus is definitely the place you want to be. If you are not a part of Google Plus and you're in this hangout, wow, and you should join. There you go. John, did, did you have? John, do you have something? John. Like others, I'll plug this hangout right. and Google Plus. Okay, and uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name. Kane okay. would be the first. That'll one. work. However, um. Uh, Infowars.com. Okay. For lack of better. And Monica, Google Plus. Um, you right? can find me on Google Plus as M Monica and Nathan. My name is Nathan Peeplo, and I blog about bird sounds at earbirding.com. Steven? Well, I'm Steve in Chicago, and uh, I had someone that I invited that just came in. I really wanted to. Uh, Get her a chance to speak, but I dropped out. I think she saw me drop out, and she dropped out. So, oh well. But um, I wanted to bring to attention Michael Chekhov. Uh, that is a famous, not so famous acting teacher, but the most brilliant student of uh, Stanislavski. And uh, and Don Arnold, the lady that was here, is in Chicago, and she teaches uh, Chekhov technique. She's a director and founder of the Moving Doc Theater Company. Moving Doc. It's my dog. At movingdoc.org, it's m o v i n g d o c k dot org, and uh, she's also part of the official Misha Michael Chekhov uh, Studio International Certified Teacher. Maybe we can get her an act too. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 she's I, welcome she's, to join. I would love her to come in. She's extremely talented. I, I, I'll have her come in next time. Yeah. Just message anybody that wants to get in just, that that's not already on the list. Make sure you message Monica, and then she'll. Be sure to get you on the list. She'll probably add everybody anyway here. Maybe I'll start the hangout at um, uh, seven my time or nine Eastern in future weeks, and then we'll have like half an hour where we try and get everyone together. Okay. That actually works. That sounds good. Yep. Okay. Yeah. okay. Stephanie, did you have anything you wanted to mention before we stop? Yeah, and just, well, just become, you can find me in Google Plus at Steph Bonriger. Just become social media consultant for um, a website called International Movie Trailer Festival. IMTF for short. And there's going to be, and we're in the process of creating Google Plus page for right now, so then you can follow it. But you could just go to the website right now because there's all sorts of trailers and every genre of movie. Just vote on them because the more votes, that they get then you know the more traffic for the site and it's better for me <laughs> so um yeah but you'll learn more about that in the coming days but, i am imtf.com yeah it's um yeah if you push in imtf in all capitals on google it comes up yep. okay great. just a google search yep. Okay, and my website is craigship.com, and anybody that has any ideas for any other shows, um, feel free to message me. I'd be happy to uh, record your show for you. And that'll be a wrap tonight. My website is craigship.com. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Craig. Thank you. So much. This is fun. Yeah, it was a blast. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Oh, yeah. Assuming you made it this far.